My name is uh, Tomashi Jackson, and my project is a uh, it's a public drawing and writing and cleaning project. I am interested in the laboring body as a transformative agent in public space. Um, I'm informed by the work in the 1970s by Meryl Lauterman Eucles and Gustave Corbet and Edouard Manet, artists who have um, tackled issues of public space, civic space, and, um, and the laboring body. Women in my family have been domestic workers, um, the elder women in my family, my grandmother's people. And um, after moving to New York, I found myself really interested in what I was seeing in the streets at certain hours when uh, lots and lots of women who looked a, a lot like me um, will swell the streets, um, pushing carriages and wheelchairs and doing work that is obviously intimate and obviously domestic. I found it fascinating that at these times, um, civic space seems to be uh, uh, just awash with uh, work that is inherently um, domestic um, and private. Um, people who are privately employed um, and people whose work is very often um, invisible, um, meant to be invisible. If it's successful, it's invisible. If they're successful, they're not seen or heard. A lot of people who do this work um, traditionally are migrant workers or labor migrants, livelihood migrants, and they're working informally, which means that they're working without any social protection. The more I started to dig, the more I started to uh, see over and over again this theme of invisibility in realms of policy, labor economic policy, and even inside of families, inside of homes. So there are layer, there's layer upon layer upon layer of repression, suppression, and forced invisibility. But there are, there are all these bodies, here they are, right? Changing the streets on the hour. And so my project seeks to play with that language of um, transparency, invisibility, um, and opacity um, by drawing, uh, drawing images of people who do that work, portraits onto the glass of, of, uh, of storefronts during these hours that I call high tide. I was thinking a lot about tribute um, and I wanted to give something, like I wanted to give something to the people who are still doing this work um, uh, that uh, fill the streets um, uh, during these high tide hours. And um, I considered filling um, a crosswalk with aroma, with flowers. Um, I thought about hiring people to sing uh, the national anthems of the 42 countries that these people uh, come from. I've thought about um, giving out um, fruit. Alfredo urged us to, to think beyond what we thought was like our best idea, um, which was challenging for me at first because I was really stuck on it. But I, I do remember sitting by myself sometimes, like soul searching, just thinking to myself, how long do I love the women who did this work for me? You know? Um, I'm a descendant of women who work. So, you know, it's like, how can I express that um, in a busy city street where no one has to pay attention to anything that you're doing, right? When I've interviewed my mother in this process too, because and um, she did some of that work with them in the 60s, because she was the oldest child, she could do that. And she recalls them being especially quiet. They were quiet people, um, uh, born in uh, 1915 in uh, Texas. Um, you can only imagine what they went through. And my eldest aunt was charged with raising all of her sisters after her father left for work and never came back and her mother died in her arms. And this was the work that they did. Um, they cooked and they cleaned for other people and they fed us and they bought houses and they, they, they were able to advance and they worked tirelessly without protection. And, and in their retirement, they had no benefits after working for 20 years for people who, you know, have pensions and all sorts of things. But um, people who, um, like the people who employ people today in this labor, get to avoid taxation while all of the risk is absorbed by the people who do that work. And in the process of doing that work, they're away from home constantly, 
spending more time cultivating the homes of others than, than their own homes. So it's, you know, there's, there's a lot there that we never talked about because it's just too much. And, um, and I feel like understanding the, uh, understanding the systems, understanding like the macro story at play, um, well, it can be helpful and I'm ready to have the conversation, but now they're not here. But, um, but it ended up coming back down to, um, to, uh, to the act of drawing, to the act of mark making and um, collapsing that mark making with the act of manual maintenance labor. Uh, when I'm doing this um, on a civic street or a, like an area that is like visible to the street, um, I try to wear as close to a uniform as I can find. So I haven't found the perfect uniform, but I will. Because there are moments when like my identity changes. That's something else that I'm interested in, like how labor, the work that a person does is a, key like a, essential component to how our identities are formed and defined and maintained you know um and how we're perceived and how value is perceived so yeah just quite frankly there are moments when i'm an artist and when you know this 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 woman sitting in front of this window is there's that there's something that there's something special going on and then uh, as soon as i finish the drawing i begin to clean there's nothing precious about it because it has to keep going, you know? Um, and as soon as I start cleaning in that uniform with my head tied, my hair tied up, um, yeah, just wiping it away. For me, it's a painting. And on the street, I'm a window washer again.